I think no company has won more of my comparisons than OnePlus. It's really not that difficult for any company that defied the establishment so aggressively. It would almost be ridiculous for me to sit here and tell you to buy a Galaxy S9 Plus, for example, for nearly double the price of a OnePlus 6 at the time. And sure, we've known that every Galaxy has had extra perks that each OnePlus did not, but these were never worth double the price in some cases. For the better part of a decade, recommending OnePlus to my friends and family has always been a no-brainer. They weren't the best phones, but they were too good for the price. So I'm sure you can imagine why this comparison for me is so conflicting. What happens at the crossroads of this premise when the price can no longer save you? It either means your product has grown up to truly compete against the big kids, or that you've lost a bit of touch with what the market is looking for. On one corner, we have the OnePlus 9 Pro, which the company calls your best shot as part of their bold marketing campaign. And on the other, we've got the Galaxy S21 Plus, what Samsung calls the everyday epic and proof of part of this conflict. See, before I would have done this comparison against the Ultra or a Note, but given how these two phones are now priced nearly the same, let's just say I did my best to make this debate as fair as possible. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's see which phone is better, sponsored by Skillshare. I think that if you're already jumping away from the regular OnePlus 9 or the Galaxy S21, then you're not necessarily on a budget where compromise is common. Once you scratch that thousand dollar mark, then other elements come to play like quality, capability, and even social status. That last premise alone is a hard pill to swallow for OnePlus, as its reputation for value is not in line with Samsung's fame for extravagance. That being said, once you measure them side by side, you'd be shocked at which wins what. Visually, both phones could not be more similar. I'd give Samsung the edge in quality of materials with its Gorilla Glass Victus versus Gorilla Glass 5, even if both frames are made of shiny aluminum. The 9 Pro is slightly taller and thicker, but then oddly narrower and lighter than the S21 Plus. I can't even say I consider Samsung's design more cohesive given the contour shape since OnePlus has addressed that and how they've made this camera hump more of a classic. If anything, I'd pick the S21 Plus since its weight distribution seems a bit more refined in the hand and you'll have less of a burden keeping this matte finish clean, while on the 9 Pro that depends on what variant you can find or carrier which is selling it. Where I never thought OnePlus would win is on the display front. Samsung has always been king of this department, but this year you have to go ultra if you want all the fun. They're both 6.7 inch AMOLED panels that cap at 1300 nits of brightness. They both offer variable refresh rate at 120 Hertz. And yes, I mean, the S21 Plus is a flat panel for better ergonomics, but its benefits end there. The 9 Pro has more resolution at Quad HD Plus versus Full HD Plus. The 9 Pro has slightly more screen to body ratio and can go lower in refresh rates than the Galaxy when needed. Really, the only place you won't find much of a difference is in their dual firing speakers, which are both loud and crisp. Just be clear that these phones do a bit drama with channel sponsor subcase. It's UV Also, even if both have an on-display fingerprint scanner, the 9 Pro is faster, but the Galaxy is more secure. Now, if we switch to internals, their similarities return. They're both powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888, start at the same RAM and storage, have the same IP rating, sport both flavors of 5G, the latest Wi-Fi, though Bluetooth is newer on the 9 Pro. Then the mix varies where the Galaxy has a larger battery, but the 9 Pro has significantly faster charging, both wired and wireless, obviously, if you have the optional accessories. Though, yes, the 9 Pro also includes at least the wire and the charger in the box. So yes, hardware is slightly Galaxy territory, the 9 Pro wins the display, specs is a tie, and well, software is kind of a matter of taste. 
Both devices run on the latest version of Android 11, but with dramatically different approaches in visuals. Any purist in aesthetics will drift more to Oxygen OS on the 9 Pro. This continues to be one of my favorite approaches to Android given its snappy performance, match with stock Android visuals, and a decent list of perks that makes this phone behave better than even a Pixel. One UI, on the other hand, is Samsung's take on Android, where aesthetics are different and animations are somewhat overbearing for anyone coming from stock. Maybe the reason why I prefer it is because it even beats OnePlus in perks like the side menu for multitasking shortcuts or support for features like DeX or the benefit of a completely separate environment with Secure Folder. I drift more to OnePlus for stupid little things like facial detection for notifications or the three-way mute slider, but again, your favorite is mostly up to you. I'd even say you'll struggle to find differences in day-to-day -day user experience. It's come to the point where companies have realized that gimmicks can't really compensate a user's need for essentials like endurance. And I've had no problem in ending the day with each of these phones, with the S21 Plus maybe lasting slightly longer. But then phone calls are great on both, and I can't even say that I notice differences in the 5G experience on T-Mobile's network, where you and I know this is still a work in progress, and particularly with the difficulties in New York City. The last tiebreaker left is the camera, and we have two dramatically different philosophies here. OnePlus is willing to spend hundreds of millions of dollars in a brand most consumers no longer even remember, along with crazy specifications, but then Samsung has been slaying competitors with photography since the Galaxy S6. OnePlus easily wins the spec race if you look at that, but results are more important. During the day, photos are comparable, with both phones offering three focal lengths, even if the zoom ranges vary. I'm more inclined towards the warmer results and the dynamic range of the S21 Plus, but if contrast is your jam, that Hasselblad tuning on the 9 Pro should be your pick. Also, macros on OnePlus are definitely their stronghold thanks to the play that they do with the ultra-wide. The problem is when the light gets dim, the excess tuning on the 9 Pro just kills the dynamic range, which then affects detail, and the darker it gets, the less reliable the OnePlus can be. Selfies and portraits belong then to the Galaxy. Sadly, OnePlus chose to go fix focus, so that makes its results be washed out and stale with far better color and dynamic range coming from Samsung. And uh, when we go to things like video, I mean, both phones can do 8K, both do 4K at 60, and even if OnePlus does 4K at 120, I find the results from the Galaxy to be more balanced and consistent, even if stabilization is a close match. Now, where the Galaxy just annihilates, the OnePlus is in its 4K selfie video capabilities, now with three generations of experience at it, where OnePlus seems to think the 1080p is still good in 2021. And don't even get me started about that horrible dynamic range from the 9 Pro. And listen, if you wonder why we value video recording capabilities so much when we review flagships, it's because at this price, your phone should be in enough of a creative tool. Filming great quality content is more about your skills than the tools you use though, and if you've ever considered boosting your abilities while using any of these phones or any other, we recommend you consider today's sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. It's a great way to learn new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Our friends Caleb and Niles from Moment have an awesome class called Create Cinematic Video with Your Phone to teach you just how powerful any of these devices can be. And if you follow it up with the creative video storytelling and editing class from Nikki Stevens, you'll get enough inspiration to take this craft that we do from good to great. And this is just one of so many skills. 
Premium membership gives you unlimited access to thousands of classes, whether you want to learn photography, how to play a music instrument, draw, write, or even improve your skills in business. Skillshare has something for everyone. The first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. To conclude, I have to admit I never thought I'd see the day when a OnePlus would lose to a Galaxy. It seriously makes no logical sense for a value-driven company to lose to a premium brand, unless of course the value-driven company tries to compete with the big kids and fumbles. Listen, this isn't new. We saw how Huawei came from cheap phone maker to a slayer of the competition in a couple of generations. But if you ask me what made them successful, I'd call it walking the talk. They didn't just partner with Leica for a name to be strapped on their cameras. Devices like the P20 Pro are still taking better photos than phones that have launched three years later. If you're gonna go all out with a marketing campaign, then you better deliver the goods to own the title. The OnePlus 9 Pro is a nice phone and one I have no problem in recommending to a fan of the brand. But if you really want the best bang for the buck at this price range, the Galaxy S21 Plus is just a better phone. Even if the camera isn't everything for most users, why would you pay almost the same money for lesser performance? If I had to pick between the two, I'd choose the Galaxy. I continue to have a sweet spot in my heart for OnePlus and how they've defied the establishment. But again, if the price can't save you, Sadly, it is what it is. Now, let us know which one would you pick in the comments down below. Would it be the OnePlus 9 Pro or the S21 Plus? And while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles to see me. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I picked an iPhone, now I picked a Galaxy. What's wrong, OnePlus? Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.